And these are on monthly intervals, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting. I I don't know. Have you ever had the thought that the casinos must change the odds to the slot machines whenever they want? Like maybe before a big holiday weekend, they crank the machines down really low and make it really hard to win so that they can bring in a ton of extra profit for themselves. I've always heard from people that work in the industry that this is completely false. This doesn't happen. So I set out to prove that this doesn't happen by looking at the revenue reports that the casinos report to the state. The thing is though, I found the complete opposite of what I set out to prove. And I'm not one for conspiracy theories, and I really feel like there must be something I'm missing in the data, some really good explanation for this, but so far, I haven't been able to find anything. I probably shouldn't show you guys this until I really get to the bottom of it, but I feel like I've explored every single possibility and I'm still coming up short. I've asked some really smart people, people that work in the industry, mathematicians, people that look at statistics every day, and we still have no idea what's going on, but we've come up with a few theories. We'll talk about those at the end. So I think it's time to just show you what I found. Now this is part seven of my series of everything about slot machines. If you guys like these slot machine videos, be sure to hit the like button. Please consider subscribing. So what I did is I went to the Nevada Gaming Commission website, downloaded the revenue reports. Now this is public, anybody can look at this. I'll link the website where this can be found down in the description. This is the data that the casinos themselves report to the state every month. They have reports all the way back from 2004 to present day. The casinos aren't listed individually, they're separated in categories. And this 48 page document has every jurisdiction in the state. Like here we have the Las Vegas strip casinos that are in between 12 million and $36 million revenue and there's six casinos that fall into that category. And what I want to look at is the average return for the slot machines. And now this is only a one month report and the RTP of any individual machine is gonna take a long time to get to. It could take many months or even years to converge close to that average. But this report isn't talking about a single machine. There's 55, thousand penny machines in the state it's going to get really close to that average every single month and if we look at statewide penny machines that's pretty much exactly what we see it looks like in 2004 they paid slightly better at about 91 percent and then over the next few years the average pay was decreased to about 90 percent this has a little more volatility than i would have thought before i started looking at these but there's nothing crazy here it's just that some months players were more lucky than other months. There's nothing shocking about that. It's pretty much exactly what I expected to see. If we look at the 25 cent, again, there's some trends here, a little worse than this section here, and then they got a little better. A lot of people comment on this section here. This is when COVID happened. The reports were all over the place for a couple months. Nothing too shocking about that. This really shows what I already knew. When a casino wants to change the payouts of the machines, it's not over a weekend or a, even a week at a time or a month. It's over the scale of years or even decades. And that's exactly what we see here. So where does this conspiracy theory stuff come in that I'm talking about? It happened when I started graphing every denomination together. That's when we start seeing some really weird things. Let's look at the strip casinos and to really help you grasp this, I want to show you what I expected to see. Here I've taken the payouts from the penny, quarter, and dollar denominations and I made similar data. This is what I would have expected to see. The penny's hovering around 88%, the quarter around 92 and the dollar around 94 percent they slowly make some changes over the years there's a they're bouncing around a little bit and there's some volatility because you know slot machines are random and some months the players are just more lucky than other months but notice that there's no correlation between the different denominations with each other and there there shouldn't be if a player wins something like say a million dollar jackpot on say the dollar machines there's no reason that overall, the players are gonna be more lucky on the penny machines. Maybe some months, but not every single month. But this is just made up data. Now, let's look at the real data. On the surface, this is really similar to what I showed before, but for some reason, all the denominations are really strongly correlated. One month, every single denomination is up a couple percent, and the next month, every single denomination is down a couple percent. Look at this. 
look at them bounce together. As far as I can come up with, there is absolutely no reason at all that this should be correlating. My first instinct when I saw this is that the casinos are changing the percentages way more frequently than anyone wants to admit. They're telling their employees, we need to go around this month and change every machine in here, every single denomination up a couple percent. Or then the next month, let's go around, let's change every machine in here down a couple percent. One really interesting thing that I noticed, January always seems like it's the best month. December seems like it's always the worst month. Whether that actually helps anybody, I don't know, but I found it interesting. A lot of people's first instinct with this was, well, the casinos were just busier that month, so every denomination is higher. But this is a percentage. It doesn't matter if it's 90% of $100,000 or 90% of a billion dollars. 90% is 90%. The casino being busier one month doesn't mean that the players are gonna be more or less lucky. The only thing that the casino being busier should do is make the graph flatter with less variation, stay closer to the average. And this is their data. This came directly from the gaming commission. And I see this phenomenon with just about every jurisdiction. When I first saw this, I thought, I have absolutely just uncovered a huge conspiracy and I really wanted to get to the bottom of it. So I sent my findings to the smartest people I know, people that work in the industry. We tossed around a couple ideas. The first theory is what we already talked about. Maybe the casinos are changing the payouts a lot more frequently than it's commonly said. Well, <laughs> the, the, the thing that you immediately think of is that they are changing the tables more frequently than you would think. Yeah. Um, I kind of don't think that's the actual reason, but that's like my first initial thought was. Well, that's the, that's the logical thing to come. To. You look at that chart, and that, it, and you like you ask me what's doing that, what could what could do that. That is the logical conclusion, is to say, oh, they they must be changing. If it's all correlating, then they're all, they are changing the the RTP on a regular basis. That's possible but we all still kind of doubt it. One of the smartest people I know and somebody that's connected directly into the statistics of the casinos, he said it had to be related to player behavior. Maybe newer machines are rolling out and they have the payout percentages set higher and the casino's doing things to get the players to play those machines. Or maybe the casinos are pushing video poker way more one month than the next month. Video poker, after all, has a way higher payout percentage. If that were the case though, we wouldn't see it up one month, down one month, we'd still probably see more of a trend of the casinos are gonna push video poker more this summer, and then in the fall, there was more into slot machines. It just doesn't make sense. It's also way too correlated, and there's no way the players could be that predictable and with so few variables that the players can actually change. It's not like the players can just decide, you know what? Let's be more lucky this month. So that brought us to our next thought. What if it has something to do with the multi-denomination machines? Maybe if a machine is multi-denomination, it's getting reported to each one of those denominations and then causing them to correlate. But the multi-denominations are reported completely separately. So that kind of just seems to rule that out right there for me. One option that I really want to explore is maybe the number of casinos are changing from each report. Like here's a report for the strip casinos between 12 million and $36 million in revenue. Maybe there's a couple casinos that qualify for that one report one month and the next month they're on a different report. Like they just keep flopping back and forth over 12 million, under 12 million, over 12 million, under 12 million. The problem with that is I can't imagine that say if the Cromwell's flopping back and forth, the Cromwell has its machine set so differently from the machines on every other casino all around it that it's dragging the averages of all those other casinos and completely changing the averages by itself. I just can't see it. We can see the number of locations on each report and they're extremely consistent and they never really change. So that kind of rules that out. Plus, it's happening if we look at the report for every strip casino, or if I look at like every location in the whole state. So that's definitely a dead end. So then that brings us back to what we talked about earlier. Maybe the casinos are just busier from one month to the next. But again, it's just a percentage. It doesn't matter if it's 90% of a million dollars or 90% of like $10 billion. There's absolutely no reason that the percentages should correlate between the denominations. So we can just rule that one out. So my next thought is maybe the data is just wrong. 
Like maybe I've uncovered some other conspiracy theory. Maybe somebody's changing these numbers. Somebody's skimming money off the top of the books or something like that. Problem though is I can't imagine if somebody had that kind of power, they're leaving breadcrumbs like this. Do you see it when you see a very small sample like this? Yeah. It still does that. Yeah, I couldn't find one that didn't do it. Which makes me think like this has to be, there's some variable that I'm not seeing here. Yeah, it's gotta be some kind of a reporting methodology of the gaming commission, it's gotta be. You've thought about it more than I have. I mean, yeah, like uh, I didn't even think of the possibility of, you know, they're just falling into a different classification month to month or something like that. But yeah, I, I would think it has to be some kind of a reporting anomaly with the gaming commission. If you guys have any other ideas of what could possibly be going on, let me know your ideas. I'm not saying that the casinos definitely are changing the payout percentages, but something is absolutely going on that's strange with these reports, and I'd love to get to the bottom of it. But if the casinos are changing the payout percentages, you need to understand whether RTP should really even matter to you, which is why you definitely have to watch the next video in the series. If you made it this far, could you hit the like button for me, and please consider subscribing. For your next Vegas trip, get educated. Thanks for watching. I wonder if the Gaming Commission would answer, would, if you asked if they would answer. Yeah. They would know for sure.